Ooh, that's a hot mug, guy. Hey guys, this is our review for Saw 3, the one that's essentially a recap of the other two and a script that's probably 30 pages that's stretched out over an hour and a half. <laughs> I read somewhere that uh, Lee Winnell, who's back writing this script again, um, wrote this in less than a week. Yeah, which makes sense. It shows. It's so um, obvious. There's a little it's bit It's not of... as bad as like... Um, Silent Night, Deadly Night 2 with the recaps. Yeah, but there's a little bit of retconning here and yeah, there, they too. Start, they start some retcons. And, and they, then that's going to become more and more evident when the Hoffman character, who is introduced to, really, he's only in one drop, scene. They drop both Hoffman and the wife in this movie. Yeah. Like, it's kind of the thing I was hoping about watching the series again, is to, like, kind of remind myself about everything that happened. Because, like, I this story backs up on itself so much like the franchise backs up on itself so much it's hard to remember where things are introduced because you're like mm -hmm. oh did they introduce this person then or was it one of the fl like nine flashbacks to back then and like, do the retcons make sense which technically speaking they do a little know, bit except for the zed one like it seemed pretty evident that zed was the guy who kidnapped uh, yeah, photographer guy, yeah. but no, and now it's Amanda this I, time. I, I think that kind of that, sucks too because I liked that Zed was like a, yeah, an apostle. Like. Because it, it also it made it seem like it was. I made the comment, you know, it's really strange that we start off with Donnie Wahlberg getting free of his entrapment at the very beginning of the film, and then his fate isn't revealed until a flashback at the end of the film. The, the story that we were given wasn't even the original story. It was supposed to be the cop character. Yeah, the rig, the the uh, the black guy, yeah, the, the black SWAT officer, the SWAT officer guy from the second movie. And he takes over in the next movie. Yes, uh, and it would, I don't understand that because I feel like that could have made more sense. There's one thing that's very certain about this one though. It's definitely the goriest movie out yeah. of all of them. I remembered the gore. There's a lot of gore in this I movie. I forgot about Hook guy, like with all the chains and hooks, dude. <laughs> I forgot that uh, yeah, you Dizzy about, you gets... You about the Hellraiser reference, which is essentially that guy. Yeah, exactly. I forgot Honestly, that Dizzy they got should her have, chest They should have been a bomb. One. They should have found a way to like full Hellraiser him where the chains... Yeah. Like, I don't know. I mean, I know he was pulling him out himself, but... Well, yeah, it, they're like, oh, yeah, pull it out. I was like, what? You mean pull the one that's in your fucking jawline now? Through his mandible? Like, but I don't know how also, you get that one out. Also, the absurdity of contraptions <laughs> of these devices, of his entire plan is really starting... Well, it's already basically gone off the deep end, and now it's in the stratosphere. Yeah, I mean, and from what I remember from how the later movies... How does he get all movies, these pigs? How, like, does get L, how does he get flat screen computers <laughs> screens? Everything. In, in I mean, 2006, or 5, or but, 6, how is he able to have electricity on for all of these buildings? Like, I can understand you finding a lot of abandoned places say this is in Detroit. The more and more questions you ask, the more stupid... And irritating these movies become. Overall, though, this movie, it, it's mostly what I remember. It, it, it is a lot more flashbacks. And oh, the yeah. flashbacks really got to me at the end of the movie where we literally flashbacked two and a half minutes. And, and like, we flashback to the scene they just showed us Yeah. in the next scene. Like, I was like, okay, We're getting a recap for stuff that we saw five minutes ago, essentially. They did kind of tone it down on the stupid editing. There are a yeah, few there's, parts there's where I was less, like, like new why metal did you music do that? video stuff? But they also, um, I made a comment how, like in that television show, Ted's Declassified Way to Survive High School, there was all those zip, whoop, beep, boop, boop, kind of funny transition noises and zippity doo dah noises. This movie had a ton of saw versions. Like anytime the camera moved, there was always a whoosh. Yeah, it was like weird saw type sound effects for it, all the pan wipes which it, again the transitions are cool I'm, yeah there I'm, was I'm actually on board with the transitions the beginning of this movie had three really cool transitions from one place to another yeah and they were pretty seamless like very well done the first the second film even had one yeah. but it was buried under so much garbage that we <laughs> forgot about it this one is essentially one story repeated three times the angus mcfadden stuff um like it's literally that you have to forgive this person who is impactful and like you need to, he struggles with it and like tries to save them but the, and, like he thinks about not saving that he tries to save him and then he doesn't succeed yeah. and then he saves the judge and i was remember, for trying to all remember. of two fucking seconds yeah well, i was basically. like how on earth does the judge die here and then it's just like the dumb dumbest way like if the judge fucking died from that. Well, my, how would the key, how would your arm... But that's what I mean. If the judge was that far away, like, 
that would have killed Angus McFadden right there. Exactly. Like, if he had pulled the key, that would have killed the him. The really good part would have been, like, if there was no bullets in the gun at all. But then yeah. again, we are taking that this was also... Yeah, Shawnee by, Smith doing her thing. Yeah, but, Amanda has made these traps, so basically people are dying, so there is a bit oh. of a discrepancy between who built who, whose trap. And, I mean, maybe she wanted him to die there because that was technically the last one. Yeah, and but, the whole bit with Tobin Bell and the, sur and the surgeon is... I mean, it's there, but he also gets his comeuppance for being such a cryptic fucking asshole. I mean, also, my thing about this movie is, again, the thing that, even his stuff, because, I mean, if you want to say Sonny Smith does all the other, does all the bad ones, mm -hmm. but putting the doctor in, like, the doctor, we're saying that she deserves to die because after her son died, she, like, regressed and stopped being close with her family. Yeah. And then he traps a little girl at the end of this movie as Which, well. Which, as far as I remember, like, we're never going to see her again. Well, like we're they never going to see Angus McFadden they don't again, either. They don't imply that he can get out. They show the door locking Angus McFadden in that hospital room. Yeah, like so he's got to get out and then find his daughter. But he does no say, one knows where the daughter but is. But he apparently. does say that there's like, oh, we can get a ho an ambulance here in four minutes. And it's like all the computer stuff was all over there. So I was like, there's got to be a phone. So I don't know. The more and more you think about it, <laughs> yeah. the more dumb these movies get. Uh, at least everything past the first one. Even the first one had a few things. You're like, eh, but but it, the first one was a really contained story yeah. so it was and this one technically speaking is contained but they just find ways contained in its to own, climb contained into their in its own, own bullshit movie over and over again it's hard to say that it's better than the second one because the second one tried a lot of things didn't do them well mind you but it tried a lot of things the third one is essentially what is very evident a week old script really truly 30 minutes of material at best stretched yeah. out over an hour and a half and i mean oh the, the, even just talking about the like the amount of times that it's just like it cuts between angus mcfadden and whoever like whatever person he's trying to save in those three repeated stories <laughs> just <laughs> Yeah, there's a lot of that. There's a lot of that garbage in this. There's a lot of yelling in this movie. There's like, a lot of yelling. Like, there's a lot of swearing. There's nudity for the first time. Um, and then, like, the it, gore. Like, the fucking Tootsie Roll dude. Like, I don't know how... <laughs> the, 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 the leg pop? Of yeah, the like, I don't know how that got past censors. I don't know how this movie I, didn't get... I think it's because, like, we they started easing up because torture porn was the whole thing at that point. So, like... Well, did Hostel come out of this time yet? Hostel was two years... Like, Hostel was 05... Saw was 04, Touristas was 06. That was like the whole thing. There was all this fucking torture porn and nonsense it's, that was going on that maybe the MPA just started letting shit go because they thought the times were changing when it came to horror. It's really strange to call it a movie too because I, I don't even know if I could describe it as that. Well, it's funny because there was like that other short, Saw Rebirth, that's like half an hour long and I'm like, I wonder if we could find that. If, what, yeah, what's got more content? almost, right? What's got more content? Right? This movie or that movie? It's so empty. Like, I... I and after this point, we're in a totally, well, not uncharted territory, but unseen since release yeah. territory. Yeah, I, I, this is the first time I've watched this since theaters. I, I did go, I was like one of the people, I stayed true to the series. I did go every Halloween, well, around Halloween, and watched the new Saw movie. I did it. I did the same thing with Paramount Activity when it took over. I like that tradition. I think it's cool. But I have this is I have not seen three or anything further of the Saw movies except the first time I watched mm -hmm. them. So, so uh, like, all right. So I guess, let's, <laughs> what's your rating for this? One? Um, I mean, I ended up kind of saying two point, uh, like a saying a two point five on uh, for the last one. I think three was too high for it. Uh, so I'm gonna go with a two with this because while I liked some of it more, like there's certain I like Angus McFadden. I'm a big fan of Robert the Bruce. But um, this movie just isn't enough of a movie. Like, no, exactly. And that's like that's my thought, too. I'm actually just... I'm going to be very brutal on this, and I'm going to give it a one. See, it's, I, got, I, got, like, I guarantee... I don't know how I'm not going to have four ones at, like, exactly, lined up after this. Exactly, right? Like, that's what I'm thinking, too. Because, <laughs> I mean, and, and then Jigsaw getting its negative. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because there's such... There's not, There's no movie here. There's, yeah, there's such not a enough. little consistency of a movie. Sure, you're the, establishing a little bit more of the Amanda character. And I do but like... He, but the, you you're going to replace back, him with Hoffman. Dragon Hoffman. back Lee Winnell for his cameo. Like, those are fun. I kind of dig that. I like seeing that stuff. But I also... I, I think it kind of takes away from a character I really enjoy out of the first movie. This was so. a filler mission. 
This was a static filler mission that somehow became a story plot point at the very, very end. Yeah. Because Jigsaw died at the end of this one. Yeah, I mean, I still don't... Yeah, like, they make more movies with him dead than they do with him alive. I, yeah, I mean, I it, it this is where the movie kind of falls off, like where the franchise kind of falls off the rails for me. Even though, again, I seem to remember liking 4, but I just feel like, you know... Jigsaw's a guy. Tobin Bell's good in this. I like Tobin Bell's delivery. Mm -hmm. I like him in every. I, Tobin Bell is a fantastic actor, and he's great as the as John Kramer. Um, but I just I don't know. It's yeah. not enough movie here to be good, to be considered oh. good. <laughs> All right. Well, I guess that's it. Uh, oh, uh, we've got number four next. So now we're. Almost at the halfway point. Yeah, oh, just about. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this review. We didn't enjoy watching the movie. <laughs> but um, anyways, hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, leave a like. And if you're, if you're, <laughs> and if you're interested in more, subscribe. We're going to be on the number four next. So hopefully you guys enjoy that. I, I don't think we will. but <laughs> I wonder if he's going to change his shirt again. <laughs> All right. See you guys later. Cheers. <laughs>